speaker, uh, manages legal affairs and content licensing for the online research company ProQuest here in Ann Arbor. Please welcome Kevin Norris. Thank, Thank you, Ryan. I worry a lot. I used to worry that the internet was empowering anonymous criticism, preserving reputations forever in its near perfect memory. I'm here to worry you tonight because we've taught the net to forget. The right to be forgotten offers freedom from our angsty social history posts and other online embarrassments. So the first result someone searches for you isn't the dumbest thing you've ever done. Look, there are some things we must never forget. There is real evil in the world. Our science sometimes tainted by hubris. There are deep, profound learnings in our philosophies. But others, not so much. <laughs> There's no social good or personal growth to be had from lugging around the weight of these memories. Where I'd like to turn you tonight, though, is to the third category. I'd like you to think about things that were important when they happened. But with the passage of time and the change in circumstances, we can fairly ask whether it's OK to delete them from our permanent record. Reinvention is an American tradition. Western lawman Wyatt Earp erased his Iowa brothel. American comic Bob Hope started out as Packy East, an English boxer. Our law, though, doesn't support reinvention. American courts say that truthful information, lawfully obtained, can't be suppressed because it's become irrelevant or it's embarrassing. Europe, however, has just veered off in that direction. This is Mario. He was angry because Google still returned results on an old foreclosure. He won a judgment erasing all links to that news story. And it's because of this law, giving citizens the right to delete any personal data on anyone's server unless there were legitimate grounds for retaining it. Did they think they were deleting history? Their own IT group studied the proposal and without commenting on its wisdom, reported that the government couldn't possibly delete links at this scale. The proposal itself it started off reasonably. Just, if you posted it, you can delete it. But as it was enacted into law, it was enlarged so that it was data about you published by anyone. Enforcement moved to third parties. That's right. Faced with a problem in ethics where history was challenged by privacy, complicated exponentially by technology, Europe did the math and found the answer was Google. And it's not just Mario. People will want millions of links removed from the web. And if the search engine does not delete enough history, the penalty can be a measly 2% of their global revenue. On the other hand, what happens if they delete too much from the public record? There's no sanction at all. So given this imbalance, what would Google do? The same thing you or I would do under those circumstances. They would delete a boatload of links. It's to Google's credit that in the five months since this happened, they have refused to delete more than half of the challenged links. Still, in the week since I built this slide, 12,000 are gone. It's more impressive when you think there's nobody to fight for the dissolved links, whereas if they say no, there's a plaintiff to drag them off to the courthouse. Europe didn't solve its privacy problem. It outsourced it to Google and to Bing. But what happens when other governments set different standards for erasure? Then you'll do a search on Google.com, but get different results in .es, different again in .bz. This divergence, like Babel, will ripple across the globe, wasting the unifying power of the internet. When our lawmakers fall so far behind, they risk dangerous shortcuts to catch up, and we bear the consequences. Our laws have to be informed by philosophy and technology. 
or in the future when somebody asks an existential question, when they search for the difference between a mere fact and absolute truth, they won't even realize that we've forgotten. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin.